I need you to do me a favor. Okay. Anything for Shaq? You know Trey Young? Yeah. I make him go, ah, 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 for the Hawks. So I need you to go, ah, 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 for the Falcons. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that one was high pitched and everything. Yeah, that was pretty good. I can work on that though. <laughs> All right, I, I got a question. What do you want the Falcons fans to know about their new quarterback? Well, most of my story they would likely know, but I, they need to know that I'm going to be committed to doing everything I can to help us win a world championship. That every day I get up, like I drove to Flowery Branch today, you know, and doing rehab, and um, it's it's a 365 really like what what do we have to do to win a world championship um and i i want this to be my final stop you know i don't want to do the deal no offense but i don't want to go play for the suns and the celtics at the end i want to finish with the heat if you will and be done you know so same uh, thing i said yeah so that's that's really my plan is that i wouldn't play for another team i'd finish with the foul my boys are my boys are six and five they won't remember that i played in washington they will barely remember that I played in Minnesota. They're going to remember I played for the Falcons, and I want those to be good memories. So I feel like, you know, this is, this is the stretch. I want to finish strong. People remember how you finish more than how you started. Mm. So the start was good, but I want to finish really strong here in Atlanta and have my boys say, yeah, he may have played for Washington or Minnesota, but we remember him as a Falcon, and mm. I want fans to say the same thing. What advice would you give Kirk? He's already gone into a new locker room, but – Walking into the new locker room, how do you set the tone? You show him who you are. And I know he's going to do that by his play. Obviously, I, I know who he is, and you know they're going to be looking at him. This is a city that's almost been there, and hopefully he's a guy that could bring him to the next level. But he knows what to do. He, he knows how to do it. Like, when, when I walk in the new locker room, I didn't have to say anything. They, they already knew. Like, you know, even when I got to Orlando, Scott Scouts was, like, carrying my bag, and I was like... <laughs> You were the alpha? I, I know you're not talking to me. I said one. That yeah. was how Trent Williams yeah. was. Yeah, like, really? Supposed to give rookies a hard time, like he's saying, carry my bags. And the old line used to say, like, every rookie gets indoctrinated except for Trent Williams. He was, yeah. like, untouchable. <laughs> and I, I'm guessing Shaq was the same way. Yeah, because I looked at Scott. I was like, Jackson Alpha. I said, Scott, <laughs> two things that ain't going to happen today. One, you ain't going to whip my <laughs> and two, I'm not lifting those bags. So we're we going to get this. Yes, he never carried a bag. Yeah, yeah so I said, we're going to yeah. get this straight now. Yeah, you don't mess with Shaq. It's my you got to know in the locker room who the yeah. alphas are. And I knew it was Trent, and I'm guessing it was Shaq. And That's funny. It is what it is. So in football, you, like being a new leader of the team, you guys have different divisions. Like when I came in, I didn't even talk to the guards. <laughs> Seriously, it was just like all forwards, because I, I can't relate to the guards. So it was all forwards and the bigs, you do what I say or else. <laughs> You have that same attitude? Uh, you know, we're talking about we're opposites. Our leadership style is probably a little different. <laughs> uh, I try to relate to everybody, but, uh, uh, you know, I think, I think there are different, different ways to do it. And I think for me, it's big right now. Like, you switch teams. I, I don't like it. Like, I don't like leaving what's familiar. I don't like having these friendships and relationships going back years with coaches and players and then having to say, hi, I'm Kirk Cousins and brand new. And trainers and supports everybody's brand new and it's I got no shared history with these people that's hard and so I'm trying to kind of make up for lost time there but uh uh I don't know if when you switch teams that was difficult at all or you just kind of like whatever I tried to go to the teams where I was familiar with the city yeah so being in Orlando I was going to LA shooting movies and yeah so I was already familiar with the city I already had a house there on the beach yeah. so and then when I got traded to Miami <clears throat> that was different, but I, I was just Still happy. a nice place to yeah, live. Yeah, very nice place to live. Who and you on? won. Yeah, and we won. One last annoying question. It's actually, I think, kind of funny. The um, the Kyle Pitts thing that came out. Yeah. So, so Kyle Pitts wears number eight. Kirk has always worn number eight. And then in NFL, I don't know if it's like this in the NBA, oh, you want that jersey number, you're famously going to have to pay for that or something like that. And Kyle told Kirk, the only thing you need to do is give me more targets. <laughs> and then Kirk chose 18. And so the, the, <laughs> the meme online is, damn, Kirk really is not going to throw this ball to Kyle Pitts. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so he wanted to switch numbers anyways. So it was oh. like a perfect fit. He's like, I want to switch numbers. You want number eight. This is perfect. I was like, great. And then the league spoke into it. They're like, well, Kyle Pitts has a lot of jerseys. 
that are number eight with pits on the back. Right. You would have to buy every single one. To you or, or to Kyle. Both of us would have to just write the check. And I was like, well, what is it? It was a big number. And How I big? was like, yeah, come on. I, don't, I don't want to write that check. I'm How good. I'm ha- it, was, it was several hundred thousand. Oh, yeah. No, we're not writing that check. So I was like, I, I'm good with 18. And Kyle's like, I'm good with eight. <laughs> so yeah. we're going with eight and 18 because after like, I'm hear, good. The, after hearing the way you shop for houses, you were, there's no way. Yeah. You're like, that's a Would a young payment. Shaq have bought the number? So when I first got to Orlando, Terry Kettler said, like, you're going to have to pay me. But I'm not paying you. I'm cool. <laughs> it's, he's consistent. Like a, which number? 33. Because I wanted 33. Oh. Yeah, but he was. But so like, you said, you said, um, Everybody has a price. I'm out. I'll play. I'll wear 32. No, because he was, uh, you know, arrogant about it. He said, "Oh yeah, you you can have it, but you're gonna have to buy it." Young fella making all the money. Looking back, knowing that the money was not the issue, no. would you have bought it? No, I wouldn't have bought it. All right, see, you're good with 32. No, no, yeah, 32 was cool. Then you were 34 in L.A. And then he was traded during the middle of the season. <laughs> this guy's a savage. Was that savage? You? The statute of limitations up now. Yeah, I did that, Terry Catlish. That was all me. <laughs> <laughs> How does the meeting? You walk into the owner's office? Yeah, so I, 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 I need him about Because, like, these guys used to always say, it's your team, it's your team. I didn't know what that meant. It's your team. It's your team. I was like, yeah, he need to be about it, and they trade him. And at that point where you're like, wow, I have a lot yeah, of power. I do. It works. But the contract we couldn't get done. That's the part that bugs me is that we couldn't keep you in Orlando for the whole run. I know. That bothers me. I know. Being a guy, you know, from West Michigan, the family that owned the team was from there. Also, from the perspective of, do you know how much money the franchise would have made if he was on the team? How much they would have won? That's what I'm saying. Like, money comes with winning. The franchise will be okay. But it takes, as Shaq knows, it takes a commitment. It takes saying, we're doubling down on this. We're selling the farm a little bit to do this. But you know what really pissed me off about that that contract? So, what did I make in in LA? 120? Really made 60. Because of taxes? Yeah. Yeah, to go from Florida to California is wild. So, like, everybody's bragging about the, the what's the guy, the Oshi, the guys? Uh, Shohei Oshi. 700 million is really 300 what million. What think his name was? I thought it was, I thought it was Otoshi. Otoshi. <laughs> yeah. I'll call him that from now on. No, no, what's his name? Shohei Otani. Yeah, see, I know it had an OTI in there. there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this one is the general shape before you ask that. Uh, breakout players. General, they always help us. They're one of our favorites. Do you have any teammates, former teammates, that you would like to see have a breakout year? Guys that you just love that you're like, man, I really hope they tear it up this year. Pretty much all of them, but uh, K.J. Osborne is a receiver who was with us in Minnesota who was kind of in the shadow of Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, and I always felt like K.J. was better than the opportunities he got. Mm. And so he went to free agency and and went to New England. And I'd love to see him have a huge year in New England, kind of with a bigger role than what he had in Minnesota to show what he could do. And But that list would go on and on of guys who I feel like, because they got somebody in front of them, they don't get to, to be as good as, or show as good as they really are. Mm. You know, you want those guys to get opportunities. Do you, you ever have a teammate like that? That didn't have the opportunity, but you knew they were nice? No, because it's all... You probably went to the head coach and were like, play this guy. No, because it's all about me. 